Okay, so let's talk about the rational root theorem when we're dealing with polynomials. Problem number four is a perfect example. When we want to look at the rational root theorem, you'll see in your book that it tells you to look at p over q. The problem is, what's the p and what's the q? I suggest that we use C over A. And this is because in the standard form, polynomials are written like this. A x to the highest power plus B x to the power right below that all the way down until finally you have just your constant. So a is the leading coefficient, and c is the coefficient of constant. And the rational root theorem says look at all the factors of the constant over the factors of the lead coefficient when you have the polynomial in standard form. So p means the constant, and q means the number in front of the largest coefficient exponent. I mean the largest exponent, uh, the coefficient of the largest exponent. So let's do this. <clears throat> C, A is how I like to do it. This would be my C and this would be my A. So what we've got here is we've got the factors of 5 over the factors of 18. Factors of 5 are pretty easy. They're plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. But 18 has an awful lot of factors. We've got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. 3 goes into 18 six times, so plus or minus 3. 4, that doesn't go into 18. 5, that does not go in. 6, so yeah, 6, plus or minus 6, because 3 times 6. Not 7, not 8, but yes with the 9. And then not 10, not 11, not 12. Well, we're already past the halfway point. So we're looking at plus or minus 18. So we've got to put 1 over all of these numbers here. And what we'll get is plus or minus 1 over 1 is 1. Plus or minus 1 over 2 is 1 half. Plus or minus over 3, so 1 third. Plus or minus 1 over 6 plus or minus 1 over 9, plus or minus 1 over 18. So this was 1 over 9. This was 1 over 18. Then we have plus or minus 5 over 1. Well, 5 divided by 1 is just 5. 5 over 2, so that's plus or minus 5 over 2. 5 over third, 3, so 5 thirds. 5 over 6, 5 over 9, and 5 over 18. So, verify, we got 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, 6 times 3, 9 times 2, and 18. Taking the factors of the top and the bottom, we end up with this entire set of possible rational roots. Take away any redundancy, and I don't think we have any. I think that's all pretty good. Remember, this means that we have, put commas in all these, this is a big number set, a whole lot of possible rational roots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That means plus or minus, this means 24 
is possible. Now, do we even have a rational root? Well, remember the original lesson on polynomials. This is an odd function, and it's positive. So it's like a positive line, except for it's not a line. The third power tells us that there's going to be two changes in direction. So it's going to go like that. In other words, that's a little straighter, a little nicer, I mean. We could have it where the root, maybe your x-axis is up here, maybe it's down here, maybe it's right there. Essentially, we have a max number of intercepts of 3 and a minimum of 1 because it's odd. 3 because it's a third power, 1 because it's odd. It has to at least go through one of these depending on where the x-axis is. Okay, so a couple things to remember. Complex numbers, that is ones that are imaginary, have two possibilities. So imaginary numbers and complex numbers by extension, you have to they have to come in pairs. And if it were a complex number, like the square root of a number that we can't simplify, such as a prime, it's going to be a rational root, but I'm sorry, a, a real root, but it's going to be irrational. So irrational roots are in pairs, imaginaries are in pairs. So by deductive reasoning, since this is 3, if two are imaginary or two are irrational, that leaves one that has to be rational. So one of these has to work. Now, it's going to be a lot of work trying to figure out which one of these. We're going to have to use some deductive reasoning as well. Most likely, this will be a negative root because these are all positives. And if we use... Um, positive root in synthetic division, we keep adding and adding and adding. So I'm going to try a negative root. And if it doesn't work, we have to try a different one. Now, we had looked at this problem in class. And so I'm going to try a negative one-third because a student said it should work. Make sure that you have no gaps. Three, two, one, constant. We're going to use synthetic division because it's quickest. 18 divided by 3 is 6 times a negative. That's negative 6. This leaves me with 24. 24 times 1 third. 24 is divided by, divisible by 3 8 times. And this will be a negative. So this is a negative 5. Negative times negative is a positive. So this is 5 thirds. Adding this means it's 5 and 5 thirds. We need a remainder that is 0. So, in fact, negative 1 third is not the best, is not a solution at all. Now, since that didn't work, we have to look for a new possible root. <clears throat> Hmm, what should I try? Well, how about a negative 5 thirds? Eighteen, thirty, three, and five. Since our fellow student was wrong on this, we're going to keep trying some other problems, some other possible rational roots. 18 times 5 thirds, well, 18 divided by 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30, so this would be a negative 30. Looks promising so far. Don't know yet. 0 times negative 5 thirds is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. I think we've got it. I can see it coming. 3 times 5 is 15 divided by 3 is 5, and that would be a negative 5. In fact, we have found one of our 
roots. One of our roots is when we put in negative 5 thirds, we get out a 0. This is one of our roots. The other thing that we end up with is we end up with this, which if you'll recall, remainder constant x1, x2, this is 18 x squared plus 3, that's your constant. This is what we are down to now. All I have to do is set this to 0 and I can find our remaining roots. Now we can use the quadratic equation, we can use anything we want, but I notice that I don't have a middle term and if we recall some of the tools of our trade here, I can simply, since I'm saying this to 0, remember because that's where our roots are, is when y is 0. Well, what this ends up being is 18x squared equals negative 3. Well, if we divide both sides by 18, what I'll end up with is x squared equals a negative 3 over 18. Taking the square root of both sides, I end up with x is equal to, and don't forget this is a plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of 3 eighteenths negative, that is, under the radical sign. To get that negative out, I need to use i for an imaginary number. So it'll be plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 18 i. We're getting closer. We really can't keep it like this. We have to rationalize, simplify. We've got a lot of work left to do with this. So let's get to work. Since we no longer need these rational roots, and these came in handy already, I want to work on where we're at now, which was that x had to equal plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 18 and i for imaginary. The square root of 18 can be simplified, but truthfully, we need to multiply top and bottom by radical 18 to rationalize it. This means that we are now at plus or minus the square root of 3 times 18 i over 18. 18 is further factorable, so we are now at plus or minus the square root of 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. Check this out. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is my 18, and this is all over my 18i. A pair of 3's can now be brought out, and 3 and 18 are simplifiable. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 18 6 times. So what I end up with is plus or minus, that's 1, square root of 3 times 2, which is 6, over 6, i. It's been rationalized because I have a rational number on the bottom, simplified, and those are my remaining two roots. And guess what? They are imaginary. So I have one real root, and I'm going to have two imaginary roots. So I have rad 6 over 6i, or rad 6, 6, comma 0, and negative rad 6, 6, comma, sorry, forgot the i, i, comma, 0. So I've got two imaginary. And actually, these are complex. Nope, sorry, 
they are, um, yeah, we'd say they are imaginary. They don't have a, a real part to them. So they're, they're pure imaginaries. But here you go. There's your three equations. What this tells us, it's going to go through the x-axis at negative 5 thirds, comma, 0. And then it's going to have a turn that is not going to go through the x-axis. So when we put all this together, we're going to do some more advanced graphing with these roots. And it's going to kind of look like this. We'll have our x and y intercepts. It's our axes. Negative 5 thirds, that's about over here. And so remember this one was going up because it was positive. So it's going to come up here. And what's really cool too is our original problem, the constant was 5, so it is going to go through y of 5. It's going to come up here, it's going to go back down, but it's not going to go through the x-axis because we have two imaginary roots. Come up like that, and there you go. So we're getting closer to what the actual graph is going to look like. Now, in my next video, I'm going to talk about another way that we could have done this without the rational root theorem.